Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we are filming our very first video at my new shop, uh, Autobahn Performance. <laughs> it sounds like as if I own the shop. It's not my new shop, but it's a new shop that I recently transitioned to. It has been a smooth transition and it has been most welcoming and it's been a lot of fun too and very challenging because it's kind of a lot of cars that I don't see every day and uh, haven't worked on one of these before this is a 2013 Porsche Cayenne uh, hybrid and the customer's complaint is not only a check engine light but also a perceived misfire so it feels like a misfire and apparently it only happens when it's hot and I have not felt anything yet I'm hoping to go on a test drive pretty soon and confirm the uh, symptom <coughs> and I have uh, been told that an injector has been replaced on this vehicle in order to fix it but that was not uh, the case it's not been fixed and now it's brought down to us uh, so that we could go ahead and diagnose it and and repair it ourselves so <clears throat> I normally put a full screen view of the report but this time we're just going to scroll down I'll go ahead and position the camera so that you guys can see the report of what we have and um, I've already taken a look. This is how usually how I start my videos. I do a pre-scan, show you guys, and then take it from there. So as you can see, there's our check engine light right there. It's on. Uh, no other lights are on. The engine is running right now. It is not doing the hybrid thing uh, yet, but that's where we are. And now, as for the the report, let's take a look over here and scroll down. And we can see a ton of modules in this thing as per usual. We have intake pipe flap for bank one, airflow control closed, um, secondary air system, secondary air system. None of these have been mentioned to me before. Intake flap position sensor, electrical fault, intake flap airflow control closed bank two and bank one again closed and a bunch of misfire codes following that so um, we have other codes but they are not related at this point so misfires are read across all cylinders at this point and I think I, I know what happened here um, I've seen this before now I don't know that I don't know for certain that <clears throat> what we are seeing here is if what they're feeling is the same I'm gonna test drive it to confirm but let's go under the hood I have a pretty good idea as to what this is because it's happened to me before and uh, let's go under the hood and check it out we got our three liter and we're gonna pop this off and you know what let me turn off the engine sorry about that it's just a lot easier this way. A lot less noise. Let's go ahead and remove this cover. I've seen this engine before. It's uh, very common across Audis. Let me put this down. And we are supercharged. And let me just grab a light. And there is our intake flap right there. It's our intake flap actuator it may be a lot easier for me to zoom in okay so there's our flap and there's the arm right where it's brightest that's our arm I'm gonna attempt to move it and it does move I was expecting to see it stuck because these flaps you have to actuate the um, you have to vacuum the actuators in order to uh, get the flaps open to a certain position and then lay down the lower intake uh, the lower intake manifold which is the runners are included in uh, they have these dividers in there and if you don't do that if you don't open the flaps prior to laying them down you will have uh, them stuck closed but that's not what we're seeing here so we did a quick visual um, not really much to see other than 
a vacuum hose uh, completely loose here. It looked like they had already attempted to glue it and it's loose but I'm leaving everything as is. Uh, there, the flap is moving. There's no reason for me to believe that that's stuck. I thought that would have been the case. Right now I'm just going to go ahead and test drive it, um, try to confirm the symptom and um, since it's a sporadic code issue I made you know I already saved all my all the stuff I wanted from the report I made clear the codes and see what comes back immediately upon feeling the symptoms so uh, just to keep it simple they may, there may be multiple concerns at this point we don't know and um, we're just gonna uh, let the symptoms guide us and and the data as well so I uh, haven't felt a misfire I did feel something there's there is a, a bit of a of a fish bite misfire but I want to be a hundred percent I cleared the codes pulled it back immediately and I'm coming to a stop now so I'll be able to show you exactly what I mean and let's see if you guys can see this well you probably won't be able to I uh, cleared the codes and redid my uh, code scan on the PCM and we have intake pipe flap for bank one airflow control closed and intake pipe flap for airflow control closed on both banks. I think we have a sense of direction. I do feel a fish bite. I may have to go secondary on that. We may need to go in cylinder. I'm sorry, not in cylinder. Uh, we may need to go on a test drive with an uh, secondary probe hopefully we can get some kind of misfire counters on this and uh, go from there so far nothing and we are up to operating temperature already so I don't know under what conditions exactly it does it as of yet I've only felt one fish well felt like one fish bite misfire and not much else even under high load I may have to continue test driving this until we have a definitive confirmation of the symptom. They said it felt like a misfire. A shop even called it a misfire. They replaced an injector, so it, that's what I'm looking for. But fish bite misfires, especially when they're intermittent, tend to be um, ignition related, especially with those hard jolts. Uh, usually when it's fuel it, it tends to be repetitive and it's not so aggressive either but you know <laughs> I, I give those rule of thumbs but it almost seems like everywhere we turn whenever you have a rule of thumb established you know throughout your diagnostic process some vehicle out there just puts that to, to shame because uh, they, they tend to just break the rules for everything you know like I said, with ignition misfires, it tends to be aggressive. There's bound to be a car where, you know, that's not the case. But in my experience, that's where that's what it has been. So we're going to keep driving. All right, so we are back at the shop, and I am power braking this, and I only have one misfire on number three, and it appears that there's nothing else there uh, from what I can tell on one and three. But that is not um, <laughs> that is not exactly what I am looking for when I am looking for an, a misfire. But it does give us a sense of direction. If this is a 135 bank, at least we can uh, take a look at a single bank. As you can see, these misfire counters are ridiculous. Looks like cylinder number two is our highest one. But I have yet to see a single cylinder misfire on number two. At this point, I want to follow the codes that we have. Check out the codes that we have now. We've got intake flap stuff. So I think that will be a very good place to start. As you can see on my pre-scan, we do have uh, codes for two separate systems. And uh, something came to mind is it's the fact that it's been worked on before. Um, things happen. I've worked on these uh, before, not the supercharged ones, but the uh, the same engine, and it's very easy to get things confused if you don't 
uh, if you take it apart in a certain way, you may be able to um, prevent mixing things up. But I think we are mixing things up here. But to prove that, uh, we are using a diagram. And in my diagram, you can see that my air injection, my secondary air valves are here gray and blue with a red and a green and yellow with a red. All right? So I'll post that on the screen when we are confirming what solenoids we're dealing with. But just so that you can see it real quick. And then on top of that, my flap valve, the ones for the runner, it is our CVTS flap valve. It is a red and violet and a gray and black. So as you can see, our first one is our solenoid. And of course, it is harder than it looks. So I'm going to disconnect my center one, the gray one. That's our center one right there. And as you can see, it is a violet and red, violet and red and gray and black. That's our center one. And now I'm going to disconnect my last one all the way in the driver's side. And you'll be able to see once I light it, it is a uh, gray and black. I'm sorry, a gray and blue along with a red trace. Of course, my light isn't facing it. So let's zoom in for you guys so you guys can really see this. There's our gray and blue with our red. That is our driver's side, I'm, I'm sorry, our passenger side solenoid. That is another secondary air injection valve. So my plan is really to just find out if they are routed correctly because uh, electronically they, it looks correct. You know, um, they don't mix and match. I don't believe they do. I haven't really tried to be honest, but I'm assuming since there are two solenoids that are black and one that is gray, there's two, and in the diagrams, there's two separate air injection valve uh, solenoids and one flap solenoid. We're likely, you know, fine electrically, even though we have a code for electrical. That could be a, res a result of the flap not moving and it thinks that it's an electrical problem because of that. It may be, you know, um, shorted or what have you. You know, logically, the computer's thinking, you know, flaps not moving, we could have an electrical problem here. But what I would like to do is grab a uh, vacuum pump and see which one moves our flap and if it is in the right position. So let's go ahead and do just that. All right, so I have my light set up at the flap. I've got my vacuum pump right here. And as I said, the center one should be the flap one. So we're going to connect our vacuum pump to the center hose instead of the solenoid and pump it up with vacuum. And I'm going to zoom you guys in into the flap. And hopefully we can see whether it moves or not. So what you want to keep an eye on is that. Let me see if I can put my finger right where it is, that white flap. That's what we're looking at right there. So I'm still connected and I'm about to pump up. And as you can probably see, we have vacuum. Hold on. We are all the way in vacuum. And that flap did not move. I'm going to release it now. And that flap still hasn't moved. So now we're going to remove the vacuum pump from that one. And it's obviously the wrong hose. This is something else going on here. Um, I guess we could try this one. Doesn't really matter. It seems to go down into the intake path. So now we are on the driver's side where the where the solenoid for the air injection valve, that hose was connected to. So let's do some vacuuming. Oh. 
and there it is. So I'm going to release the vacuum now. And there we have it. The fact that it holds vacuum too tells us that everything is pretty good. So let me uh, zoom you guys out again. And it holds vacuum pretty good. So there's no problems with our, with this flap. And it is one hose going to both flaps. So let's remove our vacuum. And I think we found the issue for the codes. Now I, you know, where we left off was I could not reproduce the symptom, whether the solenoid hoses are in the right positions, one versus two. I couldn't tell you at the moment, but the way that they are bent, it looks like it, it goes in this shape. Hoping you guys see this. I think I might have to start switching back, back and forth to my other camera, how I used to, because that was a, a whole lot easier. But let's route this correctly. This camera is great, but it's not the same at all. So this looks like it was the way it was supposed to be. Those two hoses were, they're naturally bent like that. So I'm just gonna follow the, follow the flow. So, <laughs> and there goes my vacuum pump. So let's go for another test drive, see what codes come back and take it from there. If I cannot reproduce the symptoms, then I, Wow, I cannot reproduce the symptoms. <laughs> or as diagnosed Dan would say, if you can't reproduce the symptom, you can't confirm the fix or the repair. So we're dealing with what was the most obvious is the immediate codes set off and um, a lack of reproduction of the, the symptom that was given to us by the customer, which was like a misfire. I didn't feel that. I did feel one hiccup, but we're going we're gonna to go ahead and try another test drive and if it happens, then we tackle that. If not, then we'll come back and do another scan on it. Uh, I'm gonna clear the code, scan it, and uh, take it from there. So just got back from the test drive. Unfortunately, I did not feel any symptoms. Uh, could not recreate any of the customer's concerns to begin with and never felt anything throughout except for one hiccup. But uh, that may have been from when the engine was starting, uh, getting out of its you know hybrid mode. I, I guess I could call it, it's not the real uh, term for it, but <clears throat> uh, on, the, on a positive note, it did feel more responsive. It was a lot smoother. At this point, I, I have no choice but to just keep driving it and attempting to recreate the symptom. And um, as a quick uh, update, the car is on right now. It's just shut off because of the hybrid uh, sequence but there are no faults detected at this point and having the misfire counter during the test drive i could see that there was no misfires counting nothing felt i wish it was a more interesting video because at this point it's 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 a man-made mistake yes but um it was you know just a improper hookup you know sometimes it, it helps to just uh, mark whatever you're removing and come back to it later those of you who have done it plenty of times, you don't need to mark things down because you've, you're already used to it. Uh, the solenoid, the secondary air solenoid hoses are taped together and the one that goes to the runners is singled out. So there's no tape on it. There's, it's, it goes directly underneath the intake. So there's no real need to mark them in my opinion, but um, it's just a tip, you know. I wish I had more to give on this one, but uh, until it acts up, if it does, I won't be able to. So we're back again. The vehicle just started acting up a couple hours later. Um, we do have some codes, and let me see if we can show you. It is a couple of misfires, cylinder deactivation, and uh, so on and so forth. So for I'm sorry about the glare, but let's go ahead and find out which ones are being deactivated so we're going to i've got my scope set up on the secondary and as you can see there is 
a uh, burn line. There's a, a saturation, a burn line. It doesn't look great, but every system is different. You have to account for the changes in each system. One would think that is high secondary resistance, but it looks like all coils were replaced. I'm not so sure about this side though. And this is where I found this. There's no burn line there. If you look at these waveforms, there's no burn line there. Let's see if I can zoom into this. There is zero burn line there. Um, I believe those are the two that are deactivated. Let me set you guys up over here. I'm going to show that these are the ones that are misfiring or deactivated. I believe we have two cylinders that are deactivated right now. Our first two is one, three, five. So one and three should be deactivated. I'm starting with number three and disconnecting that coil. And no change in engine RPM or behavior. And then number one, disconnected. I don't think you can see that, but no change in behavior. If we go to number five, all right, we have a change in RPM. So what I like to do now is at the very least attempt a uh, attempt to take it out of the cylinder deactivation, start it up again and get a secondary ignition waveform. And maybe we'll get lucky. So I'm clearing my codes now. No fault codes detected. Let's see if we get uh, lucky with our secondary. There it goes. I'm gonna do a quick scan for codes. It says cylinder one and two misfire detected. And immediately we have no burn time in there. At this point, I'm not even sure if they, um, I don't know if they replaced all the coils or just the wrong side. I'm going to take a look at history real quick and find out if uh, the, these coils have been changed or not. Because when it's heat related, it tends to be a coil issue. But um, the fact that it doesn't go into the cylinder, it's... Uh, it looks like very, very high secondary resistance at this point. So taking a look at the history, um, it's not history with us. It's, uh, it's, it came from another shop, as I mentioned before, and they gave us the, the history on the vehicle. Uh, they attempted to remedy this vehicle with an injector, um, three coils and plugs on the driver's side. They had an intake flap issue, which is... Um, probably the reason why the hoses were mixed matched, mismatched. Uh, at this point, I see extremely high secondary resistance in one and two. Uh, I guess when it rains, it pours because uh, usually it's one coil, but uh, I have had times where, you know, several coils will fail at the same time, two, not three. I've had two fail at the same time. Uh, the amount of heat this thing produces is ridiculous. Uh, what I would, what I do want to do, and uh, say what you may, but uh, I'm going to do a bit of Swaptronics, but not because I want to prove that the coil is bad. I want to see if a lean condition caused this. It's the root cause. Um, a lean condition, believe it or not, as I mentioned in, other, in another video, uh, that would cause the coil to overwork itself and ultimately fail prematurely. Uh, the lean condition is not the direct reason for the misfire, this hypothetical lean condition. It would be the root cause of the premature coil failure. The true reason for the um, misfire, the direct reason for the misfire would be high secondary resistance, breakdown of, of uh, the ignition, the ignition system, uh, the secondary ignition system. So not to get anybody confused, there's a big difference between, you know, a lean misfire and a lean condition as the root cause of a premature failure, failure of a coil. So um, those of you who have learned from Jim Morton, he is like the king of ignition systems. 
Uh, he mentions it all the time. High compression and lean conditions can cause overworking of a ignition coil. So if you have a lean condition, you have extremely high KV and it is just wailing against those uh, that coil. You know, that coil is just giving it all it has constantly for that lean condition in order to overcome the um, resistance found within the cylinder. It's overworking itself. It's going to get tired and it's just going to give up. And it could show itself in different ways. It could be a, a shorted coil. It could be a uh, high res secondary resistance. Ultimately, if, if the insulation of the ignition coil uh, fails, it will find a, another path to ground. That's not what I'm seeing here. Uh, it would show a different waveform if it was finding a way, a, a way back to ground outside of the cylinder. That's not what I'm seeing here. I, I'm seeing extremely high uh, secondary resistance. But what we are not seeing in, is an extremely high KV. At this point, maybe the coil just cannot cope, uh, cannot fire that uh, strong. So. Uh, I'm no expert in this. I am constantly learning, so I don't want you all to assume that uh, I know everything there is to know about ignition waveforms. I am a student, but I try to apply everything I learn uh, as much as I can. So I figure why not share what I am applying, my thought process at least. That was an <laughs> extremely long explanation to explain why I'm doing a Swaptronics. It's not a justification, but it is. I don't want anybody to be confused. So let's uh, swap. Uh, the last two coils and find out if we have a lean condition within that cylinder before it's before the other one. I mean, since it won't be deactivated, you know, we can at least get a peer inside the, the the combustion chamber, see what's going on in there. So, so real quick, I'm just going to mark an X on my suspect coils in order to not get them confused. And one at a time, we're just going to swap them around just to rule out a in cylinder condition that could cause a premature failure of a coil. That way we can avoid a comeback um, and avoid a premature failure of a new coil. Uh, obviously, I would never do a coil without changing out the spark plug as well. That's part of the secondary system as well. But um, that's my suggestion. Always change a spark plug along with a coil. Never do just a coil. Um, so let's go ahead and swap it real quick. It does have our X at the very last coil there, and our middle one is our still known good uh, coil. First things first, I need to turn on my key and clear my codes. Now we're gonna start our vehicle. All right, so we are started and we have cylinder one and two misfire detected, and three. So you guys can see this. We have one, two, and three now. And going back to our suspect, it looks like we can go in cylinder at this point. And our number two is still out. At this point, this makes me want to take a look at that spark plug. Because if, uh, if our coil can manage to go inside number three, then we could have a completely blocked up spark plug. I think we should do the same test with number one and see what we get there. We're gonna switch one and three at this point. All right, so we are key on again and I'm going to clear my codes. So we have one and two still. Number one is still looking bad but the coil from number one is firing. I will say this though, this did come from, they did take it to a Porsche dealer and they said that timing was an issue. So I'm still wondering about that. We're gonna take this one step at a time. So this is our spark plug number one and it, lo it looks extremely rich. It is pitch black and wet and kind of smells like oil to be honest with you. So here's our Number two spark plug, also extremely dark. And here's our number three spark plug. Dark, but with a whitish tip. And dry, nice and dry. So let's go in cylinder. Let's go with the board scope. Take a look at what we have inside. So we are going into our number two. And it is wet all over the place. 
cylinder deactivation is supposed to prevent that. Now, is it wet with fuel or is it wet with oil? It kind of looks like oil. Uh oh. Whoops. Hmm. Let's look at number three. Nice and dry. Well, it does have some shining, but there's no puddling. If you look at the edge of the piston, there's no puddling, puddling like there is over here, number two. Let's go back over here. There's our puddling right there. Let's go back to number three, our good cylinder. See if we can spot any oil drip marks. And it is bone dry. Question is, is the oil coming from the piston rings? We, we could check crankcase pressures on this. Right here, there's our breather. We could take a pulse sensor to that or we can do a leak down and see if there's a head gasket leak between the two cylinders. It's kind of funny that both cylinders would fail that way. Honestly, I think I'm gonna go with a leak down because it doesn't make any sense for me to put a pulse sensor, put it all back together, do the pulse sensor. I could just put it in top that center right now and do a leak down. And that would pretty much put this to rest. Well, that just goes to show I should have went with my gut. <laughs> As you could see, um, the engine is running behind me and I showed you the waveforms, the spark plugs, the in-cylinder conditions and I even went ahead and did a leak down to find that it was good. I should have went with my gut. Uh, I got a little carried away there but you know what? This is where we all learn. I did one thing different. I put the good spark plug from number three onto number one and uh, switched the rest of the, the other two spark plugs to number two and three. And this is what we found. So right now I am on number one, which was a, a misfiring cylinder. And as we can see, it has a burn line. And then on number two, we have no burn line. And on number three, no burn line, extremely high resistance. And if we pull the codes, this is what we get. We have number cylinder two and three misfire detected, not even number one again. So just goes to show that not only do I have some confidence building uh, learning to do but very easy to get carried away with some kind of testing and uh, it, it's the good thing is that this is going to be fixed now nonetheless I am going to change the spark plugs um, we may end up doing plugs and, and coils to that whole bank since more than likely we're gonna have issues if we don't change that good one you know just because it's not showing any issues now doesn't mean that it, it isn't uh, it hasn't gone through the same amount of work that the other two have if two of them failed I can only imagine the third one is uh, very closely following so we're gonna head and leave it at that um, I'm gonna I'm pretty sure they're gonna do it if uh, they do we're gonna go ahead and update the video uh, go through some serious um, test driving and up and close off the video now some things to, to remember of course hindsight is 2020 this was heat related I couldn't you know there was a, a part of me that thought that maybe there was a head gasket issue between the uh, between the cylinders so but there was other things I got that I got carried away with that I shouldn't have considered because it was heat related um, I let the the fact that Porsche dealer thought it was timing affect my diagnosis and I should have done that I um, took an intake pulse anyway this is not a uh, this is a hybrid so it starts with it doesn't start with a 12 volt system it starts with a three phase wiring so there's no way that I could do a relative compression test nor is there a way for me that I know of as of yet um, to inhibit starting so that I could do a, a cranking intake pulse and to confirm timing so I will post uh, that uh, those waveforms up on the screen so that you guys can see that timing is good. It was something that I checked anyway. Um, 
just as to play it safe. So I, pre I think we pretty much covered all the angles, all the possibilities here. Um, so there's a lot of documentation on this uh, vehicle, on this concern, on all the testing. So I will put all of it up on the screen and I will also provide all that to my uh, shop owner. And that way they could see why um, we'll be doing plugs and coils today and not have to worry about anything else at the moment. All right, so we have our approval. The only thing we've been approved for is the three coils and plugs, nothing else, um, not the oil leaks, not the oil change, uh, nothing else. That's okay because they came in for a certain concern and that's what we're dealing with. So uh, after we fix everything, we're going to clear the codes, remove the cylinder deactivations, go for a long test drive, let it sit for hours, maybe up until tomorrow uh, before we call this a complete, fi a complete fix. And um, I'll keep you guys posted. All right, so we have uh, replaced our plugs and coils and as you can see, it is as smooth as can be. No more misfires. So, um, of course, we're going to have to run it through its paces, give it the test of time. To begin with, we didn't really know whether this car would ever act up on us, so we're going to have to treat it as if it is doing the same exact thing to us again. Here are the old coils. And here are the old plugs. So. After the test drive, I think I might do a secondary. I don't know if I'll film it or not, but you know what? It doesn't hurt to do it now. We have our scope set up, and I'm going to start on the good side. And, of course, these are every coil on plug is, has different kind of shielding, so you never know what you're going to get. So this is a comparisons game, really. So what you're doing is looking for the odd man out. All of them have... Um, familiar signatures and on our suspect side that has just been fixed uh, we have a very similar KV it doesn't look as if it's good when when compared to you know those wired systems where it's, it's much more reliable than these um, I've come to find out but point is is that we have very comparable signatures across all cylinders and that's what matters here and most importantly we have uh, no signs of a lean condition or high compression or high resist secondary resistance that would otherwise overwork and prematurely cause our coils to fail as you can see no fault codes detected as of yet all right so we are officially calling this a fix got for a test drive it has stood the test of time and we're closing this video out. I want to thank you all for tuning in on this one. I'm grateful for all of you who have been ultra supportive of me uh, throughout my journey as a YouTuber and as a technician. And I can't thank you all enough for being uh, there every step of the way, watching my stuff, no matter how long or short it is. Uh, you guys are awesome. I, I really do appreciate you all. Thanks again. Uh, don't forget to hit like, share, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. There's bound to be a lot more interesting stuff coming around this shop. So stick around and be sure to tune in. And I'll see you next time. Take care.